Uh, the next one is a track called Catch Me, Me If, if you, you Can by Angela Villa. Yeah. Um, and let me ask you something. Is this track written specifically for the movie, or is this... I think it was. It's also song? in Pokemon Puzzle League for N64. Right, um, it's right. one of the few... It's the only vocal song from the movie, I think, that's in that game. And, of course, it's it's midi-fied, or whatever you want to call it, on the N64, but it is in there. Uh, and you know okay. po- that Nintendo of America owns the copyright on it. Um, so this is obviously... This is interesting, because if we get to the score a little bit later, maybe... Um, there's a part, in, if you listen to the score album, which is on iTunes and most other websites, you can get the, the score, the one that has a, its purple cover with Mewtwo on it. Um, there's a piece in there that is not actually in the movie. It was replaced by this. Really? That's a small little snippet in there. It's in the, uh, I believe, the Ad- Adventure in Paradise track. Uh, there's a little bit there that's not actually in the movie. It, it was replaced by this. So that's a neat little uh, inside tidbit. Angela Via, she's sort of still around. Uh, she has a song in the second movie as well, um, and she has. Uh, but she, she has had trouble with record labels. She has had, I guess, creative differences. You could put it as, and she hasn't. She had another single that was called "Picture Perfect," which apparently did quite well. Um, but she was never able to get her debut album out, and she's been in sort of limbo for the last ten or eleven years. <laughs> ten or eleven years. Wow, that's a long time to be in limbo. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> but. Uh... The next, the next track is by someone who's definitely not in Limbo. No, he's well. He, he well, no, they don't have that on Dancing with the Stars. Actually, <laughs> if you count the UK version, uh, Strictly Come Dancing, five at least of the artists, uh, the acts on here represented in Dancing with the Stars, and a bunch That's of them on funny. Strictly Come Dancing and BBC. <laughs> uh, but in the US version, we have Joy Fatone from NSYNC, someone from Ninety Eight Degrees. I cannot remember. Iron Carter was on last season, and Willa Ford. Amanda. <laughs> Amanda. Sorry, uh, by the way, if you're ever at a party and Willa Ford is there and you need to embarrass her, this is how you do it. <laughs> Remember that uh, Pokemon movie soundtrack you were on? I have no yeah. idea who you are. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, Aaron Carter was on there. I think he made it fairly far, but he didn't get all the way. But he's, um, of course, his older brother, Nick Carter, was in the Backstreet Boys, which is funny when we mention uh, Willa Ford. Um, so yeah, this is actually, I really love this track. I'm not sure exactly why. It's, I mean, it has it's obvious, so, uh, have, have some, some fun, fun with, with the funk. Yes, it is, it is <laughs> an odd little, I mean, it's it's obviously a party track. And now it yeah. is available on most international versions of Aaron's Party, Come and Get It. Okay. Um, I really like the song. I, let me see who, uh, Steve Lunt music, apparently, uh, Steve Lunt, I don't know who that is, but he apparently wrote... Uh, it's a, it's Props a, to you, Steve Lunt. It's a really great song. Uh, it's, it's, it's a great... Like I said, this album is very dancey. Uh, you could easily play this at a party. Um, I don't know how much more to say about it, but of course he had his own, sort of his own, reality show, House of Carters. Right. Um, which I have never watched. Except no, for, like, I can't say I've seen it on E.T. Um, so yeah, he's had various legal problems as well. I don't want to go too far into him. Uh, other than the fact yeah. that he actually sued his mother uh, for uh, money because um, apparently she, it's always he, a classy move suing your mom. Well, I, I think he had a legitimate complaint, yeah. but I don't okay. know the particulars of the case. Yeah, whatever. So um, next the, next one is "If Only Tears Could Bring You Back" by the Midnight Suns. Is this something that was? I have no idea. I, I haven't even been able to find. I think I once found like a, a brief. And this wasn't even like a, an official band website or anything, or like an artist website or anything. I, a brief. The Midnight Suns is actually a group of Marvel superheroes, if I remember correctly. Interesting. And they named their band after that, but I can't find any trace of them on the internet of who they were or what they did or anything like that. I found like a brief snippet that describes some of the band members, but I've never been able to find it again. Huh. Obviously, the reason the song was chosen is, of course, you know, the title pretty much says it all. In the in the movie, the, the tears bring Ash back to life from whatever type of state he's in. So that's... He's sort of paralyzed or made... To, made I don't know. He's kind of like stone. Somewhere between paraly- paralysis and being made stone. Yeah. It's, AKA uh, dead, but they didn't want to do that for the kids. It's, it's a G movie. They can't... Yeah. It, it's, they can't kill any people. Um... <laughs> Except well, on screen, of course, Mewtwo kills all the people in the science lab. Right, yeah. At the beginning of the the movie, it necessarily... blows up the lab, and right. you know we don't see any of those guys in the in the sequel. <laughs> um, 
But um, so the last track on here is uh, "Brother, My Brother." Probably the most famous track on. Yeah. Well, I don't know about the "Don't Say You Love Me" is pretty dang famous too. I think everyone yeah. remembers that song. But this one is in the movie. It's right after Ash gets hurled across the stadium, and then he comes up and he watches all the Pokemon fighting. Right. And this uh, this song starts to play, and it was written. This is a Pokemon song in all intents, and you can get it on iTunes. Um, nice. And yeah. it, 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 actually, it's on the other ones too. I think, and actually on Zune, it's mis- the band is mislabeled as Ble L E S S E D. Oh, One thing you should be careful. Yeah. yeah, it's I D at the it's end. ID, yeah. It's actually named after I think something from Mash. Really? Um, yeah. Uh, the TV show. Um, they had something called uh, The Blessed Union of Souls on one episode, or maybe it was in the movie. I don't know. And you've interviewed them, right? I did. I interviewed, I interviewed Elliot Sloan, who was uh, the lead singer back in 2005. Cool. They happened to be doing, when I was in college, they happened to do a concert at my university. And I thought, what the hell? I actually went and did security for their concert. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I could, and then he did the interview. I actually uh, autographed my liner notes. I still have those back at my apartment in Madison. And uh, that was pretty cool. It was an interesting story. They were also, I think, along with Vitamin C, I think they were one of the older acts on there. Yeah. Uh, they, their hit single, of course, was uh, I Believe, you know, Love is the Answer. Yeah. Um, they had a couple other ones that were on the charts. Uh, hey, Leonardo, He Likes Me For Me. Oh, right. <laughs> and uh, I'm trying, trying to think what else. But uh, yeah, he didn't know, if you look, look at my interview, he didn't know a lot about Pokemon, but his kid apparently knew quite a bit and he said uh, you know he asked him is Pokemon big he says you kidding me he <laughs> says uh, and they asked well they want us to do a song for their movies like do it <laughs> so like okay and that's all the convincing he needed so uh, so they wrote this one for the movie no I think no? I don't think they wrote it I'm pretty sure actually oh, they didn't oh I see uh, was, well they, they performed it, yeah, it for the John, movie though John Loeffler uh, I think and Ralph Shuckett uh who uh, contributed on the score as well, and as well as John Luffer has written much of the Pokemon songs. His, uh, his company. He also, I think, produces uh, a lot of the kids' bop CDs, mm-hmm. um, and so she was Razor and Tie. But um, this is available though on the singles collection. It wasn't really a single. It was really eventually after the movie came out became a B side. Um, this is sort of the reverse of what most of the other ones were. I, I really like it. Uh, I love people think it's cheesy that it's you know. I think oh, it's a cool track. It's probably one of my favorites on this on this CD. Um, I, I think the the band put a lot of um, a lot of emotion into it. I think it's it's really good. I kind of wish that they had done a thing where they had two singles, like they had pushed this one to say you know adult contemporary. I think that would have really I think would have helped uh, the album in view of a lot of adult. Well, at least the album in the view of a lot of adults. I don't know what the the movie was um, what a lot of adults were expecting, but uh, yeah. <laughs> but it's one. If if you ask me, it's one of the most iconic moments in the movie, uh, or at least the most iconic song in the movie, because it's very. It seems very appropriate for that scene. It's very emotional. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, it was written basically for the movie. I yeah. mean, maybe it was something they had, but it definitely feels like it belongs there. Right. Definitely. Um, so that those are the sixteen tracks. Now, out of those on iTunes, only four are available. Catch me if you can. Used to be available until last year. iTunes went to all non DRM downloads yeah. for music, and that went. That when didn't we, make the cut. Huh? We actually lost quite a few bit of Pokemon music. We lost um, the Pokemon World single. We lost the score to the second movie, which was an iTunes pretty much exclusive. It was bundled in with the third movie soundtrack huh. in some region, but that was pretty much the place only place you could get. That is gone. We also lost the extra mile by Laura Pacini. A lot of her music went away. That's in the second movie. So um, you can get four of the tracks on iTunes. I think most of it is available on Rhapsody. I haven't checked there for a while. I think about the same on Amazon and most of the other places. So the four you can get are "Don't Say You Love Me," "Soda Pop," "Fly With Me," and "Brother My Brother." Oh, thank God, Soda Pop is on there. Well, it was like, it was on <laughs> Britney Spears' studio album, so you have to have to think it would be on there. Um, like I said, uh, so the other 12, a lot of them are variable, available as covers uh, or karaoke versions. Fair number. The Pokemon theme, there are several karaoke versions. My favorite one, of course, is Sound Choice Karaoke Volume 8. It has the movie version, karaoke version. It's third party karaoke, it's not official, of uh, the Pokemon theme from the movie. And it's the only other album that has this, uh, on the same album, it has a karaoke version of uh, Suicide Blonde by NXS. I have to mention them. I'm legally required to. Sorry. <laughs> um, it's, the only, it's the only album in which there is a Pokemon song and an NXS song. So, yeah. <laughs> um, 
But I think it's a testament to the power of this album that, you know, five effectively of the members of this um, group of these artists have been on uh, Dancing with the Stars in some capacity, or so like the, I said, the UK it means version. The, it, means five, uh, it means most of them are all has been. <laughs> I also want to say that. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of what Dancing in the Stars is for, but, you know. I'm not a huge fan. I didn't even really watch it when Steve Wozniak was on. Oh, that was horrible. <laughs> wow. Mm. He, got, he got booted off really fast. Uh, apparently he had some medical problems as well, from really? what I heard. Uh. But, yeah, so um, rather than buying this new one thing I suggested you, I would check out your local used record store. Mm -hmm. There's a good chance they have a copy for a couple bucks or less. Keep listening for more from this interview. box has an interesting sound. Sounds like there's something interesting. Hope it's not rocks. Gee, some of you may find these familiar. So these are, huh, these are audio cassettes. You know, they say 47 on there. That's the duration of the cassette. You know, if I bought this mini cassette, I should probably put something on. Now, for legal reasons, I can't put actual Pokemon music, but maybe I have something. 